As you may have heard in the media or you may be experiencing yourself, some of our customers have not received their bill as expected or it's been delayed for many months. HydroWinds moved to a new billing system last May, resulted in some issues for some of our customers and delays in receiving their electricity bill, and some of those issues are proving challenging to resolve. Welcome back. No one likes paying a penny more than they have to when it comes to their power, but billing seems to be a huge problem for Hydro One. And I'm being joined now by Christina Blizzard. She had a, a very strong series of articles today looking at the whole problem of billing and Hydro One. Christina, what's going wrong? Well, first of all, what went wrong was Green Energy Act, which forced up the price of electricity. But on top of that, Simon, there's this massive is um, issue with Hydro One, which is the giant utility, as you know, only too well, that delivers uh, electricity to most of the rest of the province. They installed these smart meters, which have proved highly inaccurate. They've Dumb, in fact. <laughs> stupid meters that yeah. have been spewing out these inaccurate, massive bills. They sent them out to uh, customers. And then for those customers that signed up for automatic debits from their account, they were taking tens of thousands of dollars. So what's, what sort of examples of use and what sort of examples of this overcharging, overbilling? And, and, and this is having a real impact on people's lives. Well, absolutely. Yeah. Um, the Ombudsman Andre Marin, you remember a couple of weeks ago, launched a big probe into this issue, and he came up with examples of people where houses had burned down, the houses no longer existed, but the, the owners were still getting hydro bills. Uh, people... But that's out, uh, uh, just hold on, people's houses are burning down, but they're still getting bills. What, 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 what does Hydro One say? What sort of excuse do they have for this? Hydro One says, well, we put in a new IT system. Always, you know, the, uh, the refuge of, uh, you know, anyone... <laughs> of last resort. Of a scoundrel, yes. yes. Oh, well, we put in a new IT system. Well, you know what? Uh, that's really simply not good enough. This is a massive company that we own that is simply failing its customers. Why can't they deliver? I mean, this is a public utility. They should be able to deliver such a basic service, yet they fall down every single time. Is it upper management? Is it just a lack of ability to serve people? Or do they just not get it? I, I think it has become such a blow to bureaucracy. You see, on, uh, on April 1st, when the sunshine list hits our desk, we will see all the upper management who are making hundreds of thousands of and, dollars. And, but, and you spoke to one customer who said exactly what his problems were, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I spoke, I've spoken to several yeah. customers. What the, the problems are massive. One person that I spoke to near Sudbury could not get his hydro bill. He moved into a new place uh, in November and could not get a hydro bill. He actually took possession in the summer, but could not get a hydro bill from them. Hydro One says, well, just estimate what you think you owe. Well, that's not good enough. That's not how, you know, yes. how can you base a business on that? Well, you can't base any business on that sort of principle of guesswork and, and what you go figure it out. Hold on, the public utility is supposed to be running the show and now the public utility has a new head, doesn't it? That's right. We have Sandra Pubatello, a former Liberal cabinet and minister. And $150,000 a year for a part-time job. Part -time nice work job. if you can get it. Absolutely. Now I've got a lot of time for Sandra Pubatello. She was one of the few very competent cabinet ministers in uh, the McGuinty government, but clearly a, a political plum, not an electrician or anyone <laughs> who... But she's a Liberal. She is a Liberal. Ah, there you go. There's the job specification straight away. Yes, absolutely. And, and now Toronto Hydro, it's not without its specific problems either. Well, no, and Toronto Hydro's problems is really stems from the price of electricity and this very cold winter. Now, why, why are electricity costs so high? It's, again, because of this failed Liberal government. But isn't the, the response supply and demand? I mean, is, is this a supply and demand situation or is it just no one can really track the prices? No one consumer is ever told within uh, you know a, a really good price point how much they're owed it's just like guesswork well exactly and the, the the fact is that the liberal government have wasted so much money uh and in, on a failed policy we are spilling water at niagara falls the cheapest greenest energy in the world at two cents a kilowatt hour they are spilling water there in order to crank up these fail these wind turbines <laughs> right across the province that are that are costing us the most expensive I could just electricity. Hear thousands of sets of eyeballs and and eyelids rolling back in the back of people's heads with viewers when you mention wind farms. It seemed to be a fantastic boondoggle for people who are lucky enough to get in on the scheme. But all this money is being spent to subsidise wind farms that really don't produce that much power to, to, to the energy grid itself. It's not baseload power. 
And we, yeah, exactly, we need, what we really needed was a new nuclear plant, but mm. of course, you know, uh, no one really wanted to go there. But what we're doing now, Simon, is we are selling this very expensive electricity we are generating with these wind turbines. We are selling that at a massive loss to neighboring jurisdictions in the United States. At a loss. At a loss. And uh, we have now skyrocketing electricity costs, which are putting our businesses, our manufacturing sector is now kaput. Well, manufacturers will move out. How can you run a business? a manufacturing business that depends on a solid supply of power and also you've got to be able to calculate that and, and work it out efficiently but all it's just not working well, and that's why people move out exactly and where are they going they're going to neighboring states like New York Pennsylvania where we're selling our very expensive electricity at discounted rates uh, but remember last year Bob Chiarelli had uh, he had all the answers didn't he I think we remember a quote from him specifically referencing this let's have a listen to it what we are doing is taking very significant steps that allow people to better control their consumption uh, and, uh, um, and uh, other factors that, uh, that allow them to, uh, to impact uh, on their rates. Well, I'm glad Bob Chiarelli cleared that up for me because talking about impacting rates, I mean, it's just always money, 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 and people with their hands in consumer pockets, but we don't seem to be getting back much value for our dollars, do we? No, and the bottom line is we've got 88-year-old uh, widows such as the one I wrote about this weekend who simply can't pay her $1,600 electricity bill. It doesn't make a Canada to be proud of for a lot of people, does it? I mean, how, how can you be hitting the people most vulnerable in society, pensioners on a fixed income, with these soaring bills and not offering any recourse? We've got about 30 seconds left. What would be your advice to... Uh, Ms. Pupitello. Well, I would say, first of all, get this boondoggle under control. And secondly, I'd say to the government, drop the HST, which is adding hundreds of dollars onto electricity bills. Do you think that'll happen? Do you think the HST will go? I think a smart politician would promise that in the upcoming election. Yeah, but you're talking politicians. No, they're not I all know. necessarily <laughs> going to be smart. No, but they're pragmatic, maybe coming up towards an election. That might focus a few ideas. I'd like to see, I'd like to see a pragmatist come up with that, yeah. All right, thank you very much, Christina. My pleasure. That was